A few months ago, I showed you how to rebuild a single piece multi-piston caliper. If your caliper looks like this Nissan and doesn't have bolts that hold the caliper together, I suggest you take a look at that video. If your calipers are Takiko or Brembo and have these bolts on the side of them, then this is the video that you're looking for. And be sure to watch to the end of it because I have a special tip to help you with reinstalling your brakes. It's time to rebuild the calipers on my free ZX6 Ninja, and I'm not really sure whether or not these can be saved. The brake calipers are a pretty simple machine though, just two cast pieces of aluminum with passages machined into them. And in the case of this brake caliper, four hardened steel pistons. With this in mind, I started disassembling these Takiko calipers to deal with the decades of rust and neglect. Oh, that's nasty. Here's my first tip to save some time. Before you remove the calipers from your bike, make sure the caliper bolts that hold the calipers together are broken free to turn. This will make disassembly on the bench a whole lot easier. By doing this before you take them off the bike, you gain the leverage you need to hold the caliper still while applying force that's needed to get them loose. The first piece I need off is the pad spring. This thin piece of steel is held in place by two badly rusted Phillips screws. Actually, more likely that they're Japanese industry standard screws based on the year of the bike. And I don't want to strip these heads. JIS screws are different from Phillips head screws. And although 90% of the time you can get by with a Phillips in a JIS head, I'm doing what I can to better my odds of success by heating up these rusted screws to help break them free. Next, I'm attempting to remove the brake pads and caliper slide shaft which is held in place with a clip. This shaft is made from steel cold roll and is severely rusted. It's not going to budge, so we're gonna have to wait for the calipers to come apart to get it out. The calipers are held together by those four bolts, and once out, I can separate the halves. Remove the pads, and with the help of some penetrating fluid and vice grips, the badly rusted caliper slide pin can be pulled out. These Takiko brakes are unique in that regard. Most slide pins are threaded into the caliper, and if badly seized, need to be heated up or even drilled out. Since these calipers have been sitting for so long, the brake pistons are seized in the caliper bores. I'm going to add some penetrating fluid around the pistons to help get them moving. Next, I need some compressed air. By applying air in one of the inlets while blocking off the outlets, the pistons will move out of the caliper. With a single piece caliper, you have to remove the piston furthest away from the banjo bolt or bleeder valve, whichever you're using first. Conveniently, with the two piece caliper, the brake fluid ports are located above each piston so you can get air directly to the cylinder. When using compressed air, be sure to start the airflow at the nozzle and then push the tip into the caliper port. Removing pistons this way can be dangerous, so if you're going to try this yourself, make sure the pistons are pointed away from you when applying air pressure. These calipers are being a real pain in the <laughs> At one point in the three calipers being rebuilt for this bike, I had one badly seized piston. Wow. These guys are really in there. This single piston would not budge, so my solution is to put the calipers back together with a piece of rubber glove between the fluid ports along with the old o-ring seals. With this one side of the caliper blocked off from the passages, I was able to get the air pressure where I needed it. To hold the adjacent piston in place, I used a C-clamp and upped the PSI on the compressor. Eventually the piston moved out and you can see how corroded it actually was in the cylinder bore. With all the pistons out of the calipers, we can remove and throw out the old seals from the piston bores. These will all be replaced with new ones and should never be reused. The calipers are looking a bit rough, especially the inner halves, full of dirt and carbon deposits, corrosion and oxidization. The pistons don't look much better, but I didn't order any replacements, so we're going to clean them up as well. To clean them, I spray some WD-40 on the inner surface of the calipers and corrosion in the cylinder bores. The mineral oil in the WD-40 will loosen the dirt and soften the carbon, making them easier to clean. For the pistons, I soak them in a container with some WD-40 in it after spraying them down. The mineral oil from the WD-40 will all get cleaned away before assembly, but it's a simple way to clean up these parts. I will let this sit overnight, and in the meantime, I can clean up the bolts that hold the calipers together. These will get a little love from a wire brush and then some metallic paint and a coat of clear. You can easily just replace these bolts if you want, but I'm working on a budget and a fresh coat of paint will make them look good enough. It's the next day and I'm armed with some warm water, mild soap, and a bit of degreaser, plus a light abrasive scrubbing cloth, the kind you'd find in the kitchen aisle at Walmart, and the real work is about to start, scrubbing my way to the surfaces under the dirt. Now this is gonna take a while, but it's well worth the results. So I'm just going to take my time 
and I'm using an old toothbrush as a parts cleaning brush to get all the crap off these calipers. It should go without saying that the cylinder bores need to be absolutely spotless. The more difficult cleaning job, however, is actually on these pistons. You can't have any deposits left on the pistons or the brake pads will drag on the rotor. So I make sure that they're not just clean, but smooth without any scores or burrs. Any rough patches or areas where the carbon has baked onto the piston and I'm having trouble getting it off, I use some emery paper to loosen or smooth the surface. Then back to the scrub pad to finish cleaning them up. When all the baked on crap is removed from the pistons, I finish with brake clean and a fresh shop towel to wipe them up. Once the calipers are cleaned and washed, I gave them a fresh water rinse and used compressed air in the caliper passages to blow out the remaining water. I left them over a heater for a few hours to dry completely and I take this extra precaution because I want zero moisture in the calipers when assembling them. If you're learning something or just enjoying the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't be afraid to share it with your friends on your Facebook page or a forum or a Reddit subgroup. If you're new here, hit subscribe because it's free and it'll help you find more useful videos for you and your bike from the channel. All this actually does help me out and I really do appreciate it, so thanks for watching. Ready to assemble, I have my new seals, caliper slide, crush washers, some new DOT4 brake fluid, and of course our new pads. I'm going to start with the piston seals, of which there are two for each piston. The larger piston seal that holds back the brake fluid and helps retract the piston when the brakes are released, and a small dust seal that's at the edge of the caliper bore. The piston seals on these calipers have a tapered edge. For seals like this, it's important to make sure the seal is positioned with the narrow end of the taper to the inside of the caliper bore. This illustration shows the position of a tapered seal. To spot the tapered seal, I look along the outer edge closely and see a slight conical shape. Not all calipers have this type of seal, some are squared off. To understand how the seal retracts the piston, take a look at this illustration. Under hydraulic load, the seal deflects in the direction of the piston travel, and when you release brake pressure, the seal returns to its original position, pulling the piston back with it. If I don't install the seals correctly, the pistons won't retract and I'll have that nasty brake drag. I'm making sure my caliper bores, seals, and pistons are well lubricated with clean brake fluid, and I won't use any sharp or pointed picks to install these seals since I would run the risk of damaging them. I set the seal squarely in the relief of the bore just using my finger. Now it's time to install the pistons. I give each piston a wipe with a clean cloth even if they're brand new, and I apply plenty of brake fluid to the piston outer wall. These Tokiko pistons are all the same size, but some calipers will have different size pistons and bores on the same caliper, so be sure to know which is which. These pistons also have isolation shims built into them to help with chatter and noise. Now I haven't seen this type of thing for years, and if you ordered replacement pistons, or if your bike is newer than this 1994, your pistons will likely have an open end. This end faces outward, and the smooth piston top is actually the part that gets inserted down into the caliper bore. I set the piston on the cylinder bore squarely and firmly push down. The piston should slide down with a little resistance, but it should slide in easily. If the piston doesn't go in, it's likely binding, so remove it and reset. The piston may be at an angle in the cylinder bore. Now installed, the calipers can go back together. The caliper halves have a seal where fluid passes from one side to the other. These small o-ring type seals fit there. One of the two halves of calipers has a deeper dish machined into it to hang on to the seal while assembling the calipers. I put a little anti-seize on the bolt threads since the hardened steel bolts are threaded into aluminum. The service manual for the Kawasaki made no reference for using thread lock. Now if your bike does ask for thread lock here, it'll have to be high heat since these types of calipers get hot when being used. Either way, I will need to torque the bolts to spec. Caliper is assembled, I can install the brake pads and new slide pin. I use a grease on the slide pin called Slide Glide. It's designed for use on brake components. The pads are then held in place in the caliper by that greased up slide pin. A new cotter pin is installed and next comes the top spring. Holding the pads apart from the bottom, I screw the spring in place again with a little copper anti-seize on the screws to ensure they can be removed again. I'm putting the new crush washers on the banjo bolt for now and putting them in the caliper for safekeeping until I'm ready to install on the bike and hook up the hydraulic system. Final component is the bleeder. Now my kit didn't come with a replacement bleeder, so I cleaned up the old ones. A bit of Teflon tape on the bleeder is always a good idea. Just be sure not to cover up the bleeder holes at the bottom. A new dust cap and the bleeder is back in the caliper. Here's my nasty calipers before and after rebuild. Rebuilding the caliper isn't difficult, 
it just takes a little patience. Final tip for reinstalling your calipers, you'll want to have them properly set on the wheel rotors for maximum effectiveness and to prevent tapered pad wear. Once your brake system is installed and properly bled, and if you need help with that, here's a YouTube short that covers all the highlights of bleeding. To properly set your calipers, leave the front caliper bolts loose and elevate the front wheel off the ground. Rotate the wheel and then by applying your front brakes, lock up the pads on the rotors. Hold the brake on and quickly make your way around to put some tension on the caliper bolts. Don't let go of the front brake, and not until all four calipers are snugged up. After you have them snugged up, you can release the brake and torque the caliper bolts to spec. Hey, good luck with your own brake job, and until next time, thanks for watching and be sure to ride safe.